What's up? What's up, guys? Welcome back. Welcome back. Oh. Hush, hush, hush. Sorry about that. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome to 343 TV with your boy Icarus Moth back again. Hello, hello. Uh, so today we're going to be doing something a little different. Uh, actually, if you were at uh, the last stream that we were doing, it's not that different, to be fair. 
Um, but uh, today we're going to be focusing on uh, creative sound design. So uh, we're going to be doing things a little different. Uh, it looks like Hulk asks, damn, what's this track? So that piece of music that was playing during the intro is uh, the only piece of music I ever lost. <laughs> uh, it was a corrupt project file, unfortunately. Ableton doesn't do it very often, but when it does, it hurts, right? So thankfully, I had a bounce of that song so I can still remember it and um, <laughs> hopefully, uh, you know, keep it up. Looks like we got uh, po Politis, po Polyitis. Oh, I'm going to mess that one up. Uh, here for the wobble bass. I'll add one. I'll do it. We'll do it today. We'll do some wobble bass. So yeah, like I said, today's going to be about um, <laughs> drones, please. Today's going to be about creative sound design. Um, and so I don't want to, again, I, I talk too much before I play some sounds. So I want to give you a little demonstration of what we're going to be doing today. And then we're going to start completely from scratch. I like to do that with you guys because then we get to build something together. I don't know what it's going to sound like. You don't know what it's going to sound like. We're all in it together, right? So what I'm going to do here is take a recording of something. I'll probably just make it myself with my mic here. And we're going to use it to create every sound in our song. And we're even going to limit ourselves further by only allowing ourselves to use certain audio effects um, to achieve this, or certain tools to achieve this. So here's the sound that I used for this demonstration. Silence, huh? It's because this is off. There you go. So a little, little, little scrapey. Mike Scrapey, I think that's exactly what it was. Um, and then I kind of just chopped up this little sample here and arranged it like a drum beat would be. So that's how we got this. You know, right? It's very silly. It doesn't sound like anything we would be using. But through the power of audio processing and music production, we were able to achieve all these different sounds. So none of that audio is synths, none of that audio is um, sampled from, you know, sample packs or anything that Ableton provides for us. That all came from the little scratchy sound uh, that we recorded in here. And um, even further, all we really did to uh, get to some of these different uh, sounds here is use three very important tools. It's uh, EQ, saturator, and compressor, and for the most part in that order. Um, and so we're going to be doing the same exact thing from scratch. We're going to be trying to see how far we can get through a piece of music within the uh, hour or so that we have together, um, purely just using some of these strange recordings, right? Um, it looks like today we're having some interesting streaming issues. So I have a really long stream delay right now. Um, so if you ask me a question or if I'm responding to you guys, um, I promise it will come. <laughs> just maybe have to wait a little bit longer if you ask me a question for me to see it and for it to get back to you. So keep that in mind. Uh, looks like we're we're all ready to jump in. So I'm gonna go file brand new project file. Let's not save that, and we're gonna reduce this all the way down to just one little audio track. Now while I'm doing this, uh, just like how Apollyidas uh, says he's here for the wobble bass, I'm gonna throw a wobble bass in the song. So give me some ideas uh, for stylistically where we might want to take this. Um, the the beginning is just gonna be designing sounds because the majority of what we're doing here is sound design. But I want to put them in some sort of context so we can hear. Uh, that they are actually functioning, you know, usable sounds. So step one is to create a recording of something. I'm trying to challenge myself, right? So I'm not trying to give myself like a clap to start with or even a, a sample. I'm trying to give myself as close to nothing as I can for the most part. So it's probably just going to be a little bit of white noise. But, you know, if we don't know, the way to hook up audio in our Ableton here is to open the preferences and make sure we have our audio input device selected here. Um, then we need a fresh audio track with the correct audio input chosen here. So I'm number one. That's my microphone. We activate the track for recording here, and then we're ready to go hit record at the top of the screen here. Uh, Effectus says techno. Okay, we'll do we'll do techno. I don't really produce techno, so maybe you guys will watch me embarrass myself. That could be fun, right? Um, or maybe I'll nail it. Maybe we'll maybe we'll make something cool. Um, so yeah, I mean techno techno is something I can do kind of quickly too because of the drum programming being pretty consistent. So let's let's start with that. So I'm just gonna give myself um, a couple of nothing recordings to to start with here. So we'll try maybe we'll try scratching the mic like I had before. Maybe I'll go shh or and we'll use just a little bit of this region, just something that's so small it's almost not there. Those are not bad. You know, let's start with the white noise because I think this is something that we can gain access to even if we don't necessarily have like a microphone or recording. Usually I start with the scratch. 
but I think this is going to be a good place for us to start too. So I'm going to chop this audio out of here so I can just highlight what I want and control command C it to copy or I can hit control command E to cut it out here, but we're not using any of the rest of this. And so I'm going to limit this to just this one short eighth note bit of audio here and I'm going to hit command or control J on it to eliminate the rest of the recording from this piece of audio. So now all we have here is our little white noise. And this is what we're going to be using to create all of our other instruments. Now we can see this is very quiet, so I'm going to use our gain feature here to turn this up. And here's me blowing into the microphone. This is our white noise. This is what we get to start with. Um, and first things first, we want to kind of decide what's going in this piece of music, right? Um, oh, uh, Pollyatta says dub techno. I don't know what the different types of techno mean. <laughs> um, some of them I do for sure. Like I know the difference between just like, you know, tech house and minimal and progressive house and things like that. But uh, yeah, some of them are going to go right over my head there. So uh, I don't know, specific uh, style of sound maybe help get me there. Uh, anyway, so we want to kind of determine what's going to end up being in this piece of music, right? So we're definitely going to have a kick drum. So I'm going to rename this track kick because it's going to turn into that. We're going to rename this hi-hat because we certainly need one of those. We'll grab another audio track that we'll name, I don't know, snare slash clap because we're not 100% sure what direction we're going to take with this. And honestly, because uh, we already are giving ourselves a challenge, um, maybe we'll make more when we get there. But for now, that's going to be our nice set of drums, which I'll put in a group called drums. And then we'll add one more audio track here for a bass, and then we'll see how much time we have left to create other elements of the song as well. <clears throat> but I definitely gonna do some percussive stuff and some tonal stuff with this horrible noise we recorded. <laughs> so um, really what the bread and butter of today is going to be, which I think I mentioned, is EQ, saturator, and compressor. And we're gonna be using these, uh, sometimes multiple of them, not just one of each. Um, but I might add every now and then a reverb here, a chorus there, uh, but for the most part, we're not getting all that crazy with the different uh, uh, audio effects because I really wanna demonstrate how powerful just those three different devices are and really what we can do with them, right? So. Step one, we want to save this piece of audio we recorded because if I start changing this, I don't want to lose the original recording because that's what we have to use for all of our other drum sounds. So I'm going to make this red. It's easy for me to find. Don't forget, that's our original recording here, just kind of off to the side. And we're going to jump into this blue one up here and turn it into a kick drum. So step one, before we start adding processes and audio effects and things like this, we need to make sure that this is the shape of a kick drum, right? So we're using our, we're essentially applying an envelope to this via the uh, audio fade options here. Um, and if we don't know what an envelope is, it's consistent of, well, usually consistent of attack, decay, sustain, and release, give or take certain parameters, depending on what it's connecting to. Um, and we need to use that to shape our kick drum, right? When I think of a kick drum in the real world, it's a beater hitting a drum membrane and it goes boom, and it's very short and it fades to nothing very quickly. Um, and so we don't want this kind of big, long, sustained sound. We want to create the, the shape of a kick drum here, right? So because we're going techno, uh, there's two things that I'm going to do that if you saw my last stream with us, you'll maybe remember. I'm going to uh, get rid of some of the fade at the beginning of this sound and move the start position over so that I catch a moment where uh, the waveform is actually kind of going off the line here. Um, I'm also going to make this shorter and use the fade on the right to create kind of this, you know, fade out. But I don't want this to be too long. That's pretty long, right? If we think about how long a kick drum is, this is about the length of it, but it doesn't hold its frequencies for that long. And we're going to be adding a lot more to this just through uh, the sound mangling we're going to be doing. So we want to shape this down a little bit, right? We're going to make this much snappier. Right. And now right away, you're starting to see this. I mean, it already sounds like a drum, like it feels like I'm cheating a little bit, but it's OK. Uh, if I were to go and grab a kick drum, not that one, maybe that one, uh, look at kind of the similar shape. Right. We have it fade to about here um, on both of these. And you can see that we have a lot of audio here that's not being represented in ours, but otherwise it's following a very similar uh, envelope or shape to uh, the sound. Right. So this is what we're going to start with. We might change this later. In fact, I can almost guarantee we will change this later, but we just need to give ourselves some launching point. And step two is to add these uh, audio effects that I was referring to, right? So we're going to go EQ8, and I'm going to use the Ableton ones here just because I think most people have them, and they do the job. Really, uh, you can use any EQ saturator compressor combo that you like. Um, they're all going to give you a very similar uh, effect here. Now, the saturator, what type of saturation you use is probably going to have a bigger impact on how this process works out. But to show you that 
we don't need to go crazy thinking about saturation. I'm going to use the default saturator and I'm probably not even going to change the saturation type or change any of the uh, like dampening options here at the bottom of our saturator or the bias or any of that stuff. We're just going to leave it with the drive, dry, wet and output because that's all we're going to really need. Um, the EQ is going to be handling a lot of this stuff. So what we need to do is find the frequencies in a kick drum with this EQ uh, from within this audio, right? Right now it's just kind of sounds like maybe a snare in the saddest state or maybe like at the beginning of a shaker or a hi-hat. And that's certainly not going to share the same frequency balance that a kick drum needs to. And so again, if you saw my last stream, I call this sound mangling, but we're going to take one or more EQs and really just change the balance of these frequencies in a very major way, right? The most that we can adjust something, well, at least by the meter here in EQ8 is by 15 decibels. And sometimes that's not gonna be enough. And so bear in mind, we're gonna also be drastically changing the volume of this sound. Right now it's already pretty quiet. We have a plenty amount of headroom to do this, but uh, over time we might find ourselves clipping into the red, in which case we have our gain adjustment on the EQ, which we can pull back. We don't necessarily wanna see this hitting red on the meter because we're gonna be controlling the clipping and the distortion added to the sound via our saturation here. So step one is shape the sound of this little to sound more like a kick drum, right? A kick drum has a lot more low end in it. A kick drum has a lot less like upper mids in it. And especially because this is like a techno, we definitely want to keep a little click on the top frequency, right? Because that does represent our, um, our, our EDM kick drum a little bit better. So like I said, we might end up using multiple uh, EQs. Like you can see I've cranked this to high heaven and it's really hard to kind of see what's going on here. In fact, the line disappears off of the uh, range of this EQ. And so we're going to just use another one. There's nothing wrong with what we're doing here. It might look crazy, but I promise you it's totally fine. And now when I use a bell shape to isolate certain frequencies in the low end, You can hear we sort of have some like boom kick drum type frequencies in this audio, even though they were so quiet before they didn't cut through uh, the white noise, but we have them and we can actually absolutely use them. Again, we don't want to clip our sound because it's not going to be a realistic example of what this sounds like. So we want to make sure that we're handling the clipping to the saturator here, which is why you see my gains going way down and also why this is becoming a lot quieter. Um, but if you remember what I mentioned before, our saturator is going to treat the, the signal way differently when we change the balance of frequencies, right? So we're telling the saturator what we want it to focus on when we end up getting to it. So we'll set this in a way that we think is going to work out, and then we'll probably just end up changing it later. I might even cut stuff under 10 hertz, because right now we're really <laughs> cranking up the volume of all those frequencies. It might be a little much. And again, just kind of keep doing shaping. I don't want to spend too much time on this because, again, you know, we, we have only a little bit of time in this stream for me to demonstrate this stuff, but I'll do my best to, to do this quickly and still get a good result. All right. So you can see we have these big kind of smiley face shapes that are really accenting the lows, the highs, and really cutting away from the mids, which is going to change the way that the saturator ends up driving uh, the signal here. So what I'm going to do is turn my output down on the saturator ahead of time, because again, cranking our gain up is going to add a lot of volume to the sound, and we really don't want to hurt our ears or damage our equipment. So preemptively, just going to turn this down a little bit, and then we're going to crank our drive. until we get at least a little bit of distortion here. Now, I think I've pushed this low end too high because we're getting distortion too fast. So you can see as I adjust this balance a little bit more, we're getting better frequencies through. So again, we're gonna have to go back and forth and tweak these things, certainly. So I'm okay with really accenting that frequency. And then if we want to, we could certainly use EQing before and after the saturator. Again, they're going to function things differently. This is going to impact what becomes distorted via the saturator versus if we use the EQ afterwards, it's not going to have nearly as much of an impact on what the saturator is doing, right? We're going to be EQing the post effect of the saturator. So it's going to give us different sounds, different controls. I can start to find some of these lower frequencies that are really required for a kick drum to be effective in what it is. 
And again, you see me going wild with these EQs. So there's four on here already, and they all have pretty crazy shapes. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, no one, don't let anyone tell you what to do, what's right and what's wrong. Oops. Um, I certainly don't necessarily need to be stacking EQs like this because I could, I still have leftover bands from some of these other ones, but it does make things a lot simpler. And we also have our scale here. So if I think something's a little too much, I can just walk the scale of these back a little bit on our EQ, and that will also help reduce the intensity of some of these effects. Right? So you can hear this starting to become what it needs to be. I kind of like that balance. Um, and now we have our glue compressor, right? Everything we've just done here, techno jazz, uh, everything we've just done here is uh, messing with the dynamics of our sound, right? Quite a bit. It's definitely changing it to be something different. Um, and so this compressor here is going to help us control our dynamics. And there's a few different things we can do with this compressor. I kind of demonstrated four of the different setting positions we could put this for things like drums. So I'm not necessarily going to uh, go through all of those again, catch that in the last stream. Um, but what we want to do is just make sure that this is punchy and full and, you know, isn't necessarily uh, following the dynamics of something that don't represent the kick drum we want here, right? So if I increase our attack and increase our release, it's going to make the kick drum much snappier, right? Because it's going to allow a few milliseconds of that kick drum to come through. Um, and then um, it's going to squash the volume of that kick drum down, right? So we're getting less of the tail of the kick drum and more of the pop of the kick drum. I think it's probably a little, a little too punchy, in which case we have our dry wet, you know, we don't need to use the compressor as you know the end all be all processor so that's not bad we could keep that one maybe i'll save this and turn it off and we'll try a different style of compression here um, oops i replaced it we can also use a very short release and attack in which case we're really going to be squashing that transient but we're also going to be amplifying kind of the tail end of our drum sound here so you can hear it preserves our little snap but it also allows the oomph of the kick drum to still roll off the drum sound, right? So this is an example of, you know, clicky and round versus very short and snappy. Short and snappy, clicky and round. It's kind of up to you which one you prefer, right? Which one you like the sound of most. Maybe we like both. Now it's, again, uh, a little crazy, but there are no rules here. Could run this one into this one. And they'll kind of counteract each other just a little bit. I have the soft clip on these glue compressors on for both of these because all of these different uh, aspects of the distortion, like the saturator here, um, will change the, the relative frequencies in our sound here based on how much more distortion they're getting from these soft clips on the glue compressor. So the more I drive the makeup here, the more we're going to get on the uh, saturation side just by naturally clipping this uh, compressor, which is maybe something we want. So certainly nothing wrong with that, right? You can hear how it's changing the frequencies of our kick drum more than it's actually changing the volume here in our meter. And then we also have our gain adjustments here on the EQ. So there we go. One last EQ to help us manage where we want these frequencies to kind of sit, right? We have some like really nice low frequencies there, but some of these ones kind of get in the way. So we could maybe duck those a little bit. Something I've mentioned in my videos before is how serious this Ableton EQ is, right? When we drop one of these uh, bands down just a fraction of a bit, like look how small of a movement that was. It's almost a whole decibel and a whole decibel is going to make a bigger difference on your audio than it might seem. And if we needed to, if there's too many frequencies in this, which they're not, we could use these notch filters. But we definitely want to be pretty subtle with how we use these. Otherwise, we're going to cut too much of the, the drum sound away, right? So let me kind of group all this stuff together and turn this off. Remember, this is where we came from, right? It's just like a little white noise into the... Uh, the uh, uh, EQ here. And so with all of our different effects, we've certainly kind of created a kick drum, right? You wouldn't necessarily know that it originally came from uh, me, me scratching into the microphone. Um, and there's certainly other effects here that we are not using, right? That we certainly could, right? Ableton has some drum processing multi-tools like the drum bus 
Uh, we have Corpus here, which would allow me to inject extra frequencies into this kick drum. We have uh, Resonator, I think is what it's called, which I could use to turn this more into like an 808. Um, but we could do all that with the EQ, right? If I go into one of these EQs here, before the saturator or around the saturator, I think I just replaced that again, um, and we take a very, very sharp bell like this, and when I say sharp, I mean sharp with this resonance, and find an 808 or find a low end resonant here. You can hear that's turned into an 808 already. You can even get real specific and make the EQ bigger so that you can use the box in the bottom left of this. So double click on the grid to get this. Uh, you get the box in the bottom left that shows you the pitch of wherever you're hovering over. So you can kind of specify like, oh, hey, I want a, an 808 playing an E note. So you can hover it there. And that's going to be quite close to an E note. I would recommend maybe turning this into um, a piece of a, a secondary piece of audio, right? Flees and flatten it or bounce it out um, in order to get more control over it. But uh, we could do that as well instead of maybe using one of Ableton's multi tools like that. Uh, I think reverb is the one that I'll end up using here and there to, to help me get over maybe a problem I'm having with the audio. But otherwise, I really just want uh, EQ, saturator, and compressor to do the majority of the work here. Um, are you going to do some snippet to show in mix? That was at the very beginning of the stream. So I think maybe uh, we missed that a little bit, but the idea behind my streams, especially is that I'm going to just make something new with you guys each time. So we all kind of get to discover this together and you guys can pitch me ideas. Um, um, sad boy, give me compliments. I appreciate you. Okay, so the, remember what I said, we have our setup here now with these tools, but we might want to go back and change where we cut this audio, right? It's very short. If I make this longer, you can hear we get kind of different styles of kick drums. This is definitely much more of like a big hip hop kick. And so we want to find a sweet spot. You know, I think I had it too short before. It's not bad, but it's definitely harder to hear. Then something like that, that has a lot more of like a, you know, tail that kind of fades out and gives us a little bit more to hear um, so there you go I like that and we decided we're writing a techno song so I'm changing my genre or my, my genre my beats per minute to 122 uh, let's do 120 you can't make me speed up I like the slow stuff 128 is too fast for me all right so here we go we got our kick drums here right again we might go and change these a little bit when we get some other drum sounds in here um, in fact I can already tell you right now that there's a tone in here that's a little bit too present so we can use a sharp bell peak to find it and duck it and or find frequencies around it and boost those so that it's not nearly as resonant by itself that's better. Okay, so I'm done tweaking and fiddling with this one. I think it's time for us to move on to our next drum sound. And we're going to make it a little bit easier this time because kick drum is a little bit harder. We have to do some crazy EQing here. So we're going to do the hi-hat this time, which, again, should be a little bit easier, especially because of considering what this sound already is, right? So just like before, step one, we need to shape our sound to match um, the size and the length of a hi-hat. So we're just going to be making this much smaller. And I'm going to get rid of all fades at the beginning because I want that little clip that happens, the little tick at the beginning of the sound when you uh, start at a moment in time that has off phase like this. And now we're going to add our favorite tools. Got EQ, saturator, and compressor. Now, again, you're going to see me doing a lot of the same stuff for each one of these sounds, but that's okay because one, um, you know, repetition reinforces education, right? So there you go. Getting, you know, a different perspective on the same thing really helps. But uh, we're talking about different drum sounds, right? What frequencies exist in these sounds? Like what we had to do to this kind of like all frequency white noise balanced, you know, flat frequency white noise sound uh, to, to pull a kick drum out of it, right? We had to use some of these tools creatively uh, to do that. And we're going to take that same sound and grab a hi-hat instead. Uh, da, 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 da. So I would ask, how long have you been producing? Um, I, kind of my uh, forever, like my, my, uh, ever since I was like coherent enough to use a computer, you know, I was maybe like, uh, I don't know, like eight or nine or something. Like I'd been writing music on my piano for a very long time. I discovered FL Studio when I was a wee little child, um, back at like FL Studio four or five, maybe. 
Um, and it kind of became my obsession, right? I'd come home from school and instead of like calling my friends or hopping on a video game, I would pick up FL Studio and design synths just like uh, for for uh, for fun because I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't you know have any concept of what I was teaching myself either. Uh, so I've been doing it for a long time. Professionally, I've been producing for I don't know, maybe like seven or eight years uh, ever since I moved to New York oh so long ago. <clears throat> So, okay. Oh, yeah, if you want to check out my project, it's uh, Icarus Moth. You can search it into the old Spotify. We like Spotify around here until they uh, until they become awful. So, anyway, we got to do the same thing with this hi-hat um, that we did this kick drum, which is identify the frequencies that exist in a hi-hat and remove this or strip this down to just those frequencies, right? So, we certainly don't really need all this sub stuff in a hi-hat. And we need a lot more high-end, right? So, we're going to use this to pull those higher frequencies out of... Um, the signal, but then we have all this like crunchy stuff in the middle, which is too much. So I'm going to use a notch to separate the kind of impact of the stick on the hi-hat and the actual of the hi-hat, right? So there's a lower frequency, which is the impact, and then there's a higher frequency, which is kind of the splash part. So I move this too low. That's not bad. We can kind of fix it even further with more EQing. Because again, this shape is crazy. It's really hard to add more lines to this shape. At least if we're going to use our eyes to help us kind of determine frequency adjustments and amounts should be using our ears but um, it's just going to be easier to see it this way so with hi-hats i like to highlight a couple of different frequencies in the high end with peaks like this i don't like to just do i'm doing this full shelf on the left here just to get them higher uh, but now i'm going to identify certain frequencies in the high end that i like the sound of better for a hi-hat while simultaneously kind of fixing some of these other frequencies. Now look, we have all the subs still because the Ableton EQ isn't perfect. So maybe we'll just add a secondary cut. Nothing wrong with that. And honestly, this sounds pretty good to me. It only took us two this time instead of you know all, all the ones it took for this. Um, but they're more drastic, right? We're doing a lot more cutting than we are boosting. Um, so now we're just going to drive this a little bit. Um, we don't necessarily need to. It already sounds like a pretty solid hi-hat. But the reason why we might want to is because um, we have less frequencies in it just it being a raw recording right when we drive this uh, we are adding harmonics to it through the power of distortion and so it's just going to make it a fuller sound right so maybe we'll drive it a bit and pull down the dry wet i used the wrong compressor here we're gonna go grab our glue compressor i like the glue compressor for musical adjustments like this using the digital compressor is great for like utility purposes like side chaining but um, i like how restricted this is because it really forces you to use your ears to decide what's good instead of um, you know, something else. Um, Fax says use a vocoder. Actually, a hi-hat would be a really good opportunity to use a vocoder because it has um, the default noise mode, right? That's going to inject noise into whatever you add it to. And so you can hear with it versus without it sounding even more hi-hat like right um so yeah if i was using a slew of audio effects here i would definitely be using this vocoder and maybe when we get to our snare drum i might end up needing to uh, but again i want to show the power of just these three so we're going to try and see how far we can get without without it for now um so again we just got to adjust our dynamics here i want this to be a little bit snappier because it is a hi-hat after all so maybe we do an attack of 10 and a release of like 8 or 1.2 which will add a little bit of a click there Make it a little bit punchier. And then lastly, we're going to add one more EQ just to make sure if there's anything we added that we don't want, we cut it out. A saturator like this, even if we're cutting out the low end ahead of time, is going to add a lot of low end back. Right? We have all this sub stuff down here. And it's barely audible, but we don't need it. Especially for a hi-hat that we're designing like this, we can probably walk that up. And if we need to, we could just do a last little bit of EQing to make this a nicer sample. You know, at this point, it already sounds like a hi-hat, so we're just kind of rocking with it like it was a sample. Still a little strong, Matt. Okay, lovely. So this would be probably a good opportunity to use a reverb as well. But I think because I'm trying to be, you know, like I said, restricted with these uh, audio effects, I might just put the reverb on the group later on. Um, so the reason why this compressor is also very helpful is because I can take this hi-hat we just made and I can drag this out. And when I do, we get different impacts, right? This is a short, short closed hi-hat. This is a bit more of a... Like a, like a, like, you know, the closing the pedal with your actual foot. And then if we wanted to, uh, we could also add one that is 
more of an open hi-hat, right? So we're going to extend this out as far as it goes, which is not super far. But that's okay. And you can tell because of our compressor, we still have a little you know, impact at the beginning. Even though we don't see that in the audio here, we have it. We could accent it just by cutting out a bit of this audio and boosting the volume at the very beginning. I don't know if that's enough. There we go. Now you can hear that a little bit better. And then we would just turn the whole group down a bit. Cool. And this version of the sample would probably want a different EQ. So there's nothing wrong with us just duplicating our entire track here so that we can adjust this a little bit because that sustained one has too much of this low end back in it, right? So this would be a good opportunity to change this a bit. Plus you don't necessarily want all your drums sounding the same, right? You hit different drums differently. They're different sizes, different materials, things like that. Um, and so we're going to want two different sounds here, right? So there we go. Now we have three hi-hats pull, just pulled out of some of these uh, different sounds here. So I'm going to call this one open and we'll call these ones closed. And again, we might change this a little bit later, but I'm just going to move these to a uh, kind of normal eighth note pattern for our drum beat here. Maybe I'll put a, an open one on the upbeat, which I didn't consolidate together. So I should probably do that. <clears throat> and now that I have it like that, I can just move it onto the same Wait, No, I'm sorry. I can't because we did an EQ change. There we go. So let's balance our volumes. Okay. Um, so that's fine with me. And then we can maybe have a second version of it that has a different rhythm for us to use at another part in our song. See, I'm always thinking, if you've seen any of my other streams, you know, I'm always thinking about arrangement. And I don't want to leave that for later on. Otherwise, I might lose some of my inspiration here. So we're going to kind of keep it like that. And we can delete this. Okay, cool. So we have rhythm A and rhythm B. Right? So we're doing pretty good. Uh, internet says self-imposed limitations boosts creativity. Yeah, it absolutely does. I highly recommend you guys if you're like, you know, got writer's block going or like maybe... Maybe you're in a funk or something um, and you just like, oh, you, oh, you want to write music today, but like you don't necessarily have the ideas, but like you have the time, you, know, you really got to make yourself do it. Uh, throw some limitations on there. Try and produce a genre you've never produced before. You know, try and use a piece of software you've never used before. Or try and, um, you know, limit the, the tools that you're already comfortable with so that you are, uh, you know, forced to be a little bit more creative about how you even approach the things that you're used to doing already. Right. So. No, it's a little bit of advice. So I think it's time for us to move on to our snare. I should probably recolor this audio because it looks like the same color as our original, and that's not great. <clears throat> wow, it looks like we have a really crazy stream delay right now. I don't know what's going on there. Yeah, whatever. Okay, so we have our original sample here, and we're going to put that where a snare drum would go. And again, I don't know if this is necessarily going to be a snare or a clap, but we'll figure it out, right? So once again, uh, I think I can probably save a little time here, but uh, we're going to shape this, right? So we got to adjust our lengths and a snare drum is certainly going to have a bit of a longer tail here, but because we're going to be using saturators and compressors, I can make this very quiet. It's going to become present again. Cool. Um, and snare drums to me are certainly one of the harder ones to uh, do with this method, but we should still be okay. And essentially we're looking for the same sort of thing we had with the kick drum, where we're going to find a specific frequency uh, within, we are the internet. Yeah, that always gets me anytime I'm, I mention them. Um, anyway, uh, what we're going to be trying to do is find a f certain frequency throughout this white noise that kind of resembles the boom. Like punch of a snare, which is similar to a kick drum, it's just higher in frequency, um, and distort that with our saturator so that we get a nice clip to it. Um, so one thing to consider is we probably want to do the same thing with the beginning of this audio. It starts silent, right? We want to shift the start position over so that it starts somewhere. That's going to give us a little click, which is going to help us, you know, make this a little bit more full frequency. 
Um, and for now, I'm just going to solo this, um, and then we'll make some changes to the to make it blend into our other drum sounds nicely. Um, so we're going to cut the low end out similar to what we did before, but not all the way. I don't want to cut everything away. I just want it to kind of fade out under that main transient. We can find the frequency we think would be a good transient. I think that one's good, so maybe we'll add more to that frequency a little later. Cut away maybe some of the stuff that's right next to it. So it helps really make that a tonal sound. And then once again, we have a lot of mids that you don't necessarily get from these drum sounds, and then we don't have enough high end, especially for the genre of music that we are creating here. So I think that's a good starting point. Let's throw one more EQ in here so that we can continue to shape this sound in a way that we need to. So we can use the resonance of this low pass filter, or this high pass filter, excuse me, to help boost that low transient point as well without cutting too much of what's underneath it. And now I think you can even hear doom, 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 doom. we have a bit of tonality to our kick drum or sorry, to our snare drum. And we're going to use that. We're going to use that to our advantage to create that punch and that pop via our saturator and compressor. So there you go. Again, snare only took two EQs this time. You never know. You're just going to have to keep working with it. If you're not there yet, I had another EQ. Nothing wrong with it, right? We're also not clipping here, so I don't need to mess with our gains too much. Um, and listen to what happens when I drive this now. So output down a bit. Right, boom, boom. We have that much heavier electronic snare sound. So I'm going to add one more EQ so that we can really control what distortion is being added and where it's coming from, right? So you can see this heavy dip on the bell is having a big impact on how our saturator distorts the signal. So again, I don't want to be too, I don't want to be too particular because again, you know, it's a stream. I don't want to waste your guys' time. But you can tell that this one's real touchy. You know, the more I spend kind of tweaking this and setting up the frequencies, the better I'm going to get. Hulk asks, could you show us how you make a clap? When I try to make a clap, it always sounds like noise with alternative volume levels. Yeah, there's like, there's a couple of different ways to think about it. Um, if you're looking for like, like the 808 clap just sounds like white noise, right? It's going to sound kind of similar to the snare we're making now a little bit. Um, one way that I've found useful for making claps is by uh, layering a variety of sounds. So in fact, let's finish the snare drum and then maybe I'll use part of it to try and make a clap uh, to show you what I would do to go about the, the two different styles. Because if you're just using white noise and you're kind of treating it like we're doing the snare drum, it's almost always going to sound like a digital clap, like a drum machine one or a snare drum. And we're not going to get that sort of like group impact style of sound, right? Think about what a clap is. It's one little impact, you know, like one little snap. And part of what makes a snap sound good in music, it's not one hand snapping. It's two hands snapping off each other, right? Snap, 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 snap. It's like... There's two and they're not at the exact same time. And it's that kind of like straddling of the downbeat that a clap and a snap can do that really helps it feel like what it's meant to. So yeah, we'll try that. We'll see if I can add a clap to these drums. We're doing okay on time anyway. And our honestly, our snares sound pretty good, relatively. So one last little kind of run through here to clean up anything I think we need to. Sound good to me. So without just full distortion, right? But with, we've really, really balanced that distortion and chosen to, to blend that nicely. So maybe I go through and see if a little less or a little more is better. You know, it depends on the genre of music you're creating. So there you go. And then once more, I don't necessarily think we need an EQ in between here. Maybe just to help kind of shelf this low end down that is not super necessary, but we don't want to cut it all away. Maybe, maybe just a little bit more of that room sound. Get rid of that. Okay. And now we're going to control our dynamics. I don't think I need to explain this one. For this one, I think I'll go up higher on the attack and shorter on the release, which is going to add a nice amount of like punch to the snare, but also allow that tail to kind of maintain itself. Okay. 
All right, this is sounding good. So one thing to consider as well is reverb, right? I haven't used a reverb yet. A snare and a hi-hat are gonna be two of the better contenders for this reverb tool, because with this, I am able to really force there to be like this nice kind of bright high-end tail that otherwise wouldn't necessarily exist in the drum sound. Um, but one thing to consider if you're using this reverb to do this kind of like sample creation process is the stereo field on this is really going to make the sounds that have reverb on them feel way different than the ones that don't. And so I might recommend putting this in mono, so cranking our stereo knob down to zero. You can see now the reverb kind of just becomes part of the snare, right? Now don't forget. Size will have a pretty big impact on how metallic it sounds, especially at these lower decay times. And then we might want to you know, set up what kind of snare we want. Now, this is not what I want to be using. If we were to put this before the saturator, you'll notice a different effect. Right? It's a lot more blended in there. So maybe if I was going a little bit more like dubstep mode or future bass mode, that would be a good addition for us. But I think uh, because this is house music, I think I can probably just get away with putting our reverb on the whole drum group and just balancing it and creating a nice little like room sound with this reverb so that uh, it feels like these drum sounds were recorded in a studio, right? We made them with microphone scratchy. And so they're going to feel a little bit weird and disjointed, right? But that, that, uh, that reverb there really helps them kind of be part of the same space. Cool. So snare is sounding pretty good. Again, now that we have everything in context, we might want to go through and make some slight adjustments. Like I think it'd be a little punchier maybe. Okay, so I'm having a problem with my open hi-hat. I don't like that it doesn't extend all the way to the end there. So, you know, what's to stop us from warping this? We'll just do it. We'll just do it. We'll just warp it. We'll just move it. That's what makes Ableton special, right? Warping is great. All right. <laughs> Today's not about warping. There you go. So now this actually extends to the end of that next drum sound like it should. And there you go. I think we did an okay job with these. Um, certainly one thing we might want to do to help bring them all kind of closer together is highlight all these tracks, turn it down so that relatively we're not sending a clipping sample into this reverb in this group. And then... We do the same thing we've been doing. EQ, saturator, compressor. We're gonna these are gonna be a lot more subtle than the ones we were using before. But again, filters that cover the whole track or the whole sound, group of sounds, help make them feel like they're part of the same unit, right? Helps push these things a little bit closer together. Makes it feel like they were coming from the same room, same space, same microphone, same recording. However you're thinking about it. There we go. There's our, there's our original sound. So not to forget, this is what we started with, right? And we've ended with some nice drums, right? They're a little quiet relatively, so we could probably go through and fix that with some processing. But again, I'm not going to use any of these fancy multi-tools. We're just using the, the three goats and maybe a little bit of reverb here and there. But again, I've got this on 5% dry wet, right? It's like it's there, but it's barely there. Um, all right. So like I said, I'm going to try a clap. And I'm not going to spend too much time on this. And the way that I'm going to do this is just by recording uh, one of our snare drums into another audio track. So I'm going to select our snare drum on the input. I'm going to hit record here. All right, so there we go. We have one of our snare drums here. Okay. So actually, you know what? No, let's, let's start, from, start from, from scratch. We don't necessarily need to do as much for this clap. Uh, it's going to be a little weird, though, and it's probably going to take multiple tracks. And this is kind of what I mean about it being more of a challenge. We want to create a bunch of really short snappy sounds that are all different frequencies and all aligned kind of different locations. So I'm going to use multiple audio tracks here and I'm going to group them together so we know these are all the clap group within group. It's a really good Ableton 11 thing or maybe even Ableton 10 was allowed to do that. I don't remember anymore. All right. So very short sound, right? Super short. And we want this to be kind of resonant in the mids and the high end. So we're going to cut out the low end and find like one of those kind of, you know, clap frequencies. 
and then we're going to cut out some of the stuff in the middle maybe because it's meant to be a clap um i mean saturator is a little bit um optional here because we could put this on the group as well it's not necessarily going to help as much um but the glue compressor is going to be really important because we're going to use this to make this clap snappy. So long release, kind of a longer attack as well. And we're going to crank that threshold quite a bit. So that's going to force this to be a much snappier sound. And I think we can make this even smaller. Okay, physically, it will not let me make this any smaller, which means I just have to shorten it. Okay, something a little bit more like that. Okay, so from here... Hey, Gary, it's good to see you again. Sounds really real. Oh, thanks, man. We started with this. I don't know if you've been here the whole time. I don't know if we've ever done that together, but it's kind of interesting, right? So there we go. So again, we also want this to start at the beginning so we get that little click, right? So that's kind of maybe one of our claps. And then I'm going to have a few around this that hit at different times, and I'm going to cut this at a different location, which means I need to just duplicate this track. <clears throat> I'm going to cut this at a different... Ah. <laughs> said i'm gonna cut this to a different location right we're gonna move this over and i'm going to move this eq to a different spot this is representing somebody else's hands that hit at a different frequency right so i don't know how many i'm gonna have to do to make this feel legit uh but we'll see uh this will be just the last one for now and we'll see if it's enough right fine and then i guess we'll just move this over a little bit okay so all together not not far enough we need these to be expanded out right so we get the multi-clap sound and again i don't think this is clicky enough i would just probably make all of these way shorter and now that we have something like that i'm probably going on to the group uh, to try and kind of fix the relative frequency I think I made them too snappy. <laughs> now I'm, I'm literally, I'm going back and forth here. So maybe just threshold up on some of these here, right? Maybe the highest one. You know, we got, we got the same stuff we could do. You know, reverb is going to help a lot with the clap sound. But I would do very, very short. Very small. Kind of like that um, and then if we need to we could also compress it all again again we don't necessarily have to be going this wild with our compressors but it's not so bad right that's that's clappy enough and what's cool about having these three separate is i mean one we could go and change the pitch of this audio i've not tried that on any of these different sounds up down whatever it's different sounds right but we can also change the order and the placement here so if i was going to use these in context right maybe that's the first one copied into the space for the second one but for the second one maybe i swap these so maybe this hits early and this hits late which gives us this versus this right maybe we have one over here that's a little different where this hits late or on time i mean this hits early this hits on time and then this hits late and then we'll do the last one which will flip this and this simulates this idea of like oh um these, this is real people really clapping in a space, right? This is not necessarily just one sample repeated. It's meant to kind of feel a little human, right? So if we play this, I'm going to take away my snare so we can really hear what the clap sounds like in context. It's loud. And I can hear a frequency that's just too much. It shouldn't be there. There we go. It's not the greatest in the world, but you can you can hear where I was kind of going with that. So again, I'm pretty much when it comes to all these different drum sounds we're creating, if you spend just a little bit more time on them, I promise the result's going to be a little nicer. So, okay. So here are our drums. Remember, we started here and we ended here. Now that we have claps, I can kind of add them as rhythmic extras, right? So we have a little bit of variation in our beat here. Okay. 
Okay, cool. So this is where we're going to leave our drums for now. Still think our claps are too loud, though. There we go. So that sounds a little bit like we have this kind of like claps in our combo. We got our hi-hats, we got our kick drum. Everything is sounding nice and full. But what about instruments, right? We got to actually create some sounds here as well. Um, and that's where we enter uh, a different tool in Ableton that is really going to help us out here called Sampler, right? I think I've talked about this in some of my other streams. I'm sure you guys have used this a lot. It's really, really helpful. Um, what I can do here is I can take this piece of audio we recorded, bring it into Sampler, and now I can play it like a MIDI keyboard or like a MIDI instrument, right? So I can pitch it up by playing higher notes and I can pitch it down by playing lower notes. Well, this is not very tonal, right? We don't really have anything coming from this tonally and there's two choices we have here either i can and we'll, we'll make a synth with both both options here so either i can micro sample this which means i'm going to go and find a piece of this wave shape that i kind of like and i'm going to take our oh i'm sorry i'm doing this a little bit early um, i'm going to take a loop region with this tool which we can activate by oh i've never even tried the screen zoom i wonder if that works with obs We're about to find out um, we take our sustain mode and we switch it to one of these two, which gives us our loop region. Um, and that allows me to tell it to, Hey, focus on just like this little section of audio and loop it. So when I play a note with this now, you can hear it's kind of repeating this, right? And that adds tone to my sound. If I bring the start position over, right away, we're getting some like kind of organic sounding buzz sounds. So we're going to kind of leave that there as a starting point. But listen to what happens is I change the placement of this or change the size of it. it stays the same pitch because it's the same frequency regardless of where I put this. But it changes the actual sound of the wave. If I change the size of it. It's going to change the pitch, right? Because it's changing the frequency. Um, and so we're going to save that one for probably one of our wobble sounds. Um, and then I'm going to show you the other way. So either that or we could take this piece of audio we had and force tonality with it or in it, force tonality in it with this uh, EQ8, which is something that I already kind of showed off a little bit. Um, but what we're really just going to do is isolate a frequency out of here that is tonal by really doing our best to cut away from almost everything else here. And I like to pick a lower one because it's easier to kind of adjust and pitch around. And we want to definitely double click on this so we can specify a note. And I'm going to choose a C note because that's going to immediately sync it to my piano. So we'll cut this down. Again, I don't necessarily want to completely cut out everything because that's going to leave me with some extra frequencies I can use to create other effects in the signal. I think that's fine. There you go. And then from there, we just need to save this, right? So I could duplicate it, freeze it and flatten it, or I could just record it to an audio track or I could export it, which would definitely be the longest version of that. Um, I can delete these now that we have that in audio and you can see it's got bigger, right? And it has shape to it, <laughs> which means we can use that to our advantage when we throw this in the sampler. The other thing I want to note is, look, I'm going to throw a tuner on this, like the Ableton audio effect tuner, and I'm going to play a C note on my piano. And there we go. We got a C note. So there we go. This is kind of like a sine wave, which actually gives us a lot of control over what we turn this into, right? So maybe this is going to be like our deep house bass. We'll start with that. So I'm going to move this to where the line kind of intersects. And then we're going to use some of the uh, adjustments we can do with um, Sampler here to uh, add some texture to this, right? We don't necessarily need to use Sampler. Again, if I wanted to stay true to my uh, my restrictions today and just use EQ, Saturator, and Glue Compressor, we could do that as well. Um, if I were to drive this with the Saturator, we're going to add harmonics to it, right? Look at what the sound looks like on the EQ before driving it. And then look at what the EQ looks like after driving it. Right? We have teeth of the comb now. It's not just one uh, one pitch here, one fundamental. It's a variety of them. Right? 
So we can get some crunchier textures out of this if we wanted to. Something I like to do, especially for bass sounds, which this is meant to be, um, is making a full frequency sound kind of like this by driving with the saturator and then cutting away from those frequencies with a filter. You can hear that that becomes a much more harmonic sound like it'll come through much smaller speakers it's a lot easier to hear but it doesn't necessarily make it like gritty and angry right without it's just so quiet and subby you can't hear it but with we actually get some of those upper frequencies that make it nicer on smaller speakers so there you go that's going to be a nice sub bass for us so we can can leave that here i'll call this a sub bass and then we got this thing, which is certainly not playing a C note when we play a C note on our piano, right? I don't know if I've mentioned this in any of my streams before, uh, but it's easy fix. So what we're going to want to do here is add our audio effects tuner, kind of like just what we did to the other one. And we're going to play a C note on our piano. So if you're using your computer keyboard, that's the letter A. And you can see when I do that, our tuner is showing us a little bit south of a D, right? We're a little bit flat from a D note. And so I can fix that very easily. It says that we are negative 16.3 cents away. So I'm gonna go to the bottom left of our sampler tool where we have our tuning things. I'm gonna select D because that's what it's the closest to. So the root is gonna become D, which is two up from C, mind you. And then detuning is gonna go up 16 cents because we were down 16 cents. And now when I play a C note, look at that, we're right on the money, right on a C note, which means that if I were to copy um, samples around or uh, midi clips around from other instruments it's going to line up right it's going to be playing the correct notes right if i go into my midi grid here like i want to write a melody and a harmony and i play an e note it won't be an e note if i don't go and tune my sound ahead of time right um good stuff i usually don't work with samples but i kind of find this inspiring yeah so it's cool right it's cool to see what you're able to do with so little in audio i think a lot of people get wrapped up in like oh man i can't my synths don't sound cool because i don't have c room or like oh man my drums don't sound good because i don't have a splice account like we don't have to get so wrapped up in all these crazy tools and resources that are out there we could just scr scratch a little noise into our microphone grab our favorite eq and saturator and we're off to the races right so yeah we don't necessarily need to be so stuck on what resources are out there we can we can do a lot with a very very small amount so anyway, we want to make this a wobble bass, right? I was requested a wobble bass, and so we are going to find a good part of this line. I want something buzzy like that. Right, and now we can use our EQ to actually add movement to this. Right, so I'm staying true to my restrictions and I'm, I'm forcing myself to do this with uh, an EQ. But there's something cool I wanna kinda show you about why I'm doing it like this. It's because I can now add a saturator at the end of this EQ and drive it, kinda similar to what we were doing with our uh, other like 808 sound up there. But now the placement of my cutoff filter here is going to have a huge effect on the saturator. Right? Because the frequency balance is going to um, you know, determine how the saturator actually generates its distortion. So we can use that to our advantage to create some cool sounds here. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's probably all I'm going to do. We might use some automation to move this around, or I'll come up with a better way to do it. Um, so let's actually start placing some notes here. We're going to absolutely change these later, but we need to get something down so that we can start building context for this. And we'll have it be kind of this sort of like swung uh, house, sort of like techno style bass line here. So I'll shift these a little bit off the line so that they're not, you know, fully in time, a little bit syncopated. Right, and we'll just kind of loop this. And we're going to add, ooh, I hit the wrong button. Uh, streamer window, streamer window, you showed it. Okay. Um, so we're going to um, add some variation to our cutoff here so that our saturator does different things, right? Because without the EQ, we just kind of have this like regular electro sound, right? But with this thing, we can add movement to it. So it's not, not the same every time, right? So we'll pull open our automation lines with this button up here. 
and see if we can add some cool shapes to the frequency position that really affect our saturator here. So you can see we can add a wah, wah, ah. Right, we can add some really drastic ones. And we'll just kind of copy this and make some slight positioning adjustments here because I don't want to take too much of our time, of course, of course. Uh, Icarus Moth sample pack forthcoming. Um, maybe. Uh, so Splice would be the place I would probably want to put that. And they were kind of like rolling back on their artist packs a little bit because they got inundated with so many requests. Um, I do actually have a sample pack on Splice that I created. Um, it doesn't necessarily have my name on it, but it's called Weekend Gloss. Uh, so there you go. Self plug. Go buy my sample pack. It will pay me directly to my bank account. Appreciate it. <laughs> so there you go. We can see this has movement now. I should have gone all the way up with these ones. It's a little crazy. Um, so we can walk them back a bit and I'll copy this over. And now we need to find the right way to use the saturator. Now, one thing to note is we have full sub going through here and we have a separate instrument that's meant to kind of handle sub. And listen to how that low pass filter, sorry, the high pass filter also pretty heavily impacts what the saturator is doing. So maybe we'll go through here and add kind of a similar, uh, you know, set of adjustments here for the high pass filter. So look at our look at what our EQ is doing. It's like dancing, right? And now we just need to find the right saturation balance to make this, you know, interesting and do its thing. And I kind of like that, but at this point we might want to just try a different type of saturation, right? I said I was maybe not going to do this, but especially for tonal sound design, you can get a lot of really crazy stuff with this. So we're switching to Wave Shaper, open up our Wave Shaping options over here with this drop down menu, and this allows us to go a little wild. This would also probably be something that you would end up automating. I'm not because of sake of time, but this is okay for me. I feel pretty okay about this. I do hear a note change. That would be not a bad idea, which is just sending this up a half step. It already sounds like it's doing it. So I'm just going to make it happen intentionally. Right, so there we go. I'm just gonna let this loop and we already have a nice sub bass, right? So I'm gonna throw one more EQ over here at the end of this and just dip the lows a little bit. I'm not cutting them away, but I wanna make a little bit of room for our sub bass here. And there's nothing wrong with me just copying this MIDI right down into it because we know it's the correct note already. I just need to make sure it's the right octave. It's not, it's too high, right? So there's our sub bass. And maybe we should actually have it be long. So in fact, I can hit the legato button here if I want to. And that just gives us these really long sustained notes. Sub bass is already moving on its own anyway. It's a really solid sub bass there. Might actually save that one for myself. All right, so maybe we have this extend when the actual beat comes in. Um, and how much time do I have? Okay, so I'm gonna do one other thing and then we'll add a tonal instrument and then we'll just kind of uh, probably call it because I don't wanna just spend too much time here. So we are going to um, group these together and I'm gonna add an auto pan. And this is something you guys might've seen from me or from other people, but we're gonna use this to pulse our drums with the uh, um, 
uh, the, the pattern of our kick drum, right? So instead of having to go crazy with a side chain and a compressor, since it's consistently on the pulse, all we have to do is increase the amount of our auto pan here, uh, turn the phase down to zero. So it's not actually panning things anymore. It's just a volume modulator at this point. Uh, sync it to the speed of our song and choose quarter notes. So one over four. And then set our shape to a downward um, sawtooth and invert it. So it's an upward sawtooth. And now, if I have this at 100%, you'll hear it kind of pulsing a little bit with everything going on. And that's going to help our drums cut through these sounds. Because right now it's too loud. And to make things a little bit nicer on you guys, I will put something on the master so it doesn't sound super quiet, kind of empty. There we go, it's a little nicer, right? Okay, so let's make one more sound, something that's a little bit more tonal. Um, and again, we had a couple of different routes that we could have taken to um, you know, achieve this effect here. Um, we have the micro sampling and we also have um, the, the tonal shaping here. Um, and because of you know time and also what these sounds are and what the song kind of sounds like, I'm just gonna duplicate our sub bass here and make some changes to it, right? So let's cut out some of these lower frequencies here. Pull this saturation way back. And we can see what this would sound like if we were to play kind of some like notes or some chords way higher up. It's not so bad. And we don't want this to necessarily exactly follow our bass rhythm. So maybe we can add some of these other uh, rhythmic points in here. Cool. And then one thing I really need to mention, otherwise I'd feel kind of bad, is when we're using samples like this or sounds like this with our sampler tool here, under the pitch slash oscillator tab, we have the ability to process this via FM synthesis, right? We have an FM AM switch down here. Um, and this is going to allow us to add a lot more interesting frequencies to this sound than there currently are, right? It kind of just sounds like a sine wave right now. And so the way this works, we need to make sure our sound is in tune with the song, which it is. We went and did that with the tuner. Um, but we need to increase our volume over here to actually add the effect and then set the envelope we want over here. Right. So you can hear that's kind of adding this sort of like wood block sound to the to the instrument, which is also really cool if I play this low. Right. Might add a little bit of a release here. And we could try and maybe turn these into chords. Like I don't I don't know if it's really gonna matter much. I kind of like it. We'll keep it. Why not? And notice this is in the same group as our auto pan, so things are still pulsing. We kind of like that. And while we're here, we might as well add something that's changing over time to make this feel like you know something is happening. So if we go back to our pitch and oscillator tab, I have this decay and sustain creating a very short amount of processing on this FM. So if I go over to our decay time here and I automate this to be longer over time, listen to what happens to the signal. I am going to have this repeat though because that's how it's going to kind of progress back and forth. Right, so we're pushing the amount of frequencies that stick around in this for much longer. I could also change the pitch of this. So I have coarse and fine tuning adjustments here if I wanted to. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily going to help us out here. So it's a little bit, little bit too uh, sharp for us. Versus going to 0.5 might actually be okay. Right, that's fine. I prefer one though. I think one's sounding really nice uh, for what we're doing here. And then to, to cap us off, because I think this is probably where I'm going to have to end us, we're going to do a very similar automation that we were doing with the uh, uh, FM processing in our sampler here with the reverb. So we'll have it start with a little bit. And then over time, this dry wet will become more intense. So maybe up to about 50% here or so, maybe even a little bit beyond that. And we'll have the decay time become more intense 
which is going to make this start to become way more techno-like. Again, I told you, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Ooh, kitty, jeez. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't make techno music. So if this sounds way off base, then let me know. But all right, here's, here's our song. And again, do not forget, especially for those of you who just tuned in, every single sound in this song, no question, no excuses, came from this. Me blowing into my microphone, right? That's all it was. So um, I'm going to do the slightest arrangement so that we can actually hear this stuff kind of coming in over time. Um, I'll play it back for you and please type any questions you have in the chat so I can get a chance to answer them uh, before I end our stream for the day. So I think we could start with our bass line and our synth and then when the drums come in, we'll have the actual bass here be here. So we'll have it be the smaller one and then we'll have the rest of the drums come in and I only want the kick drum to start the song off, right? So for this whole section we have no drums and then for this section we only have actually maybe we do just claps in the beginning we have no other drums than that and then for this one we have kick and clap and nothing else and then things come in in full and continue progressing okay this is looking good to me uh this is the original sound i just have it muted so don't worry about that um, and this is what we've kind of put together here so yeah put your questions in the chat um i'm gonna play through this um and then we'll we'll call it <laughs> So there you go. We got we got something started here for sure, especially considering that we have, you know, everything coming from this little white noise layer. I think things are sounding pretty nice and coherent. You know, could certainly use a couple of audio effects, but like I said, I didn't use anything beyond EQ saturator and compressor except for the one reverb we have and the one auto pan we have here. Um, and that's pretty much what we're rocking with, right? So let me just play through the soloed versions of all of these sounds real quick so you can get a really good representation of what's going on. Oh, looks like somebody wanted to come and join us here so we can listen to it with the kitty. Oh, come here. All right, kitty likes house music. So we have our kick drum here. Right, so we were increasing the low end quite a bit, adding some saturation and comp some compression here. Look at all these crazy EQs for those of you who missed this. We have our hi-hat which is cutting everything down to the high frequencies. Little, actually an insane amount of saturation, but we don't notice it as much because it's all high end. We have, oh dear, okay, caught. Uh, we have open hi-hat, which is the same processing with a higher uh, cut so that we get less low end, right? We have our snare. Similar, just crazy EQing and saturation and compression. We have our clap, which is three different sounds that are all playing a short little click but they're a little bit shifted away from each other, right? So that creates this sort of like group clap um, sort of deal. And then we have our wobble bass, um, which was a request <laughs> from one of our viewers here. Um, this sounds a little messed up. I didn't quite nail this one. I think this is the one that's getting in the way of the song a little bit. Maybe you can fix it a little bit, I don't know. Uh, then we have our sub bass. Right, which is the same thing. It's essentially just a tonal piece of white noise that we boosted to high heaven with an EQ. We cranked our drive on a saturator and then cut away from those extra frequencies. So without the filter, we have this, but I don't want all that noise. And then we have our little deep house chord synth, which came from the same tonal thing, but we're utilizing our FM processing here in the sampler and also some automation on our reverb. Every single other audio effect in this thing is EQ, compressor, and sampler. So 
So there you go, guys. That's it for me. Thanks for sticking with me here. Don't forget about um, the other 343 stuff we've got going on. We have our physical location. I teach classes there, a uh, big variety. So certainly check out our website to see what we're offering there. We also do online classes. So if you're looking to jump, jump on Zoom with us, you know, we do those as well. They're pretty great. Uh, look out for the 343 giveaway. I think uh, this week our giveaway is a pro session of your choice, which means you basically get to win some nice free education like we're always throwing at you. Um, so definitely take a look at that. I'm sure some of that was being posted in the chat. Um, so yeah, otherwise, I think that's it for me. Uh, thanks for tuning in again, guys, and I will definitely catch you next time. Streamer window. Oh, my buttons don't work anymore. Whatever. <laughs> See you guys.